What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. This is the last show of the week. We will not have an episode on Friday or Monday. next Monday. So that's April 9th and the 11th. 12th? 9th and 12th. 12th. April 9th and 12th. We will not have an episode, but then we will be back and better than ever after that. We're taking a little vacation. I feel like we've never... We only do this when we get the allotted time off, like from the entire office office closes. closes, And then, so that's like around Christmas and then 4th of July, we usually have off. We've never taken episodes off just Noah was straight up told he had no choice but to take days off. They were like, you got to take some time off. And then by default, that means Fran and I have to take time off. Just means the whole Chicks in the Office team needs to take time off. That's great, but then I guess we don't have any episodes because yeah, it's like, who yeah. Will, yeah. This is the thing. Right. Well, if we all, if we, if we're doing it, we all got to do it. Yeah. So we're all doing it. We're all we'll Take in. a little bit of a break and we'll be back better than ever. I know, like we said it a million times talking about this new studio, but it'll yeah. be there and People we'll don't be ready to go. anymore. They do not well, believe yeah, us it's anymore. It's been like a month now almost. I feel like we've been talking about it. They don't believe Before us. Before May, I can promise that. Okay. Oh, I was hoping it would be Yeah, I would say well, when we come back maybe, from vacation. Maybe it will be, but can't yeah. get into it. Okay, we don't want to get be yeah, yeah, before yeah. May okay. is the right thing to say. Okay. Noah, you're right. But it is very exciting. I know we keep saying it. Everyone's sick and tired of hearing it until we actually get it. Yep. But all good things. Fran, how are you doing on good this things, lovely Tuesday afternoon? That's been stuck in my head for forever. I think it's just because Joe loves the, along along came Polly so much, the movie, that every time it's on TV we put it on. And always I just have like anytime you say good things immediately in my mind mm. Alec Baldwin's character says <laughs> good things good things like every single time I play it and it says it in my head all right I got one for you okay along came Polly or a couple's retreat uh along came Polly <sighs> see I'm going couple's retreat no I, I like along came Polly I like couple's but retreat but uh, it's they got yeah, the I same think, vibes I- yeah Honestly, I don't know. I might go couples retreat. I'm mm. thinking about it. I'm thinking if island you, vibes. They don't have the same vibes, but yeah, they got yeah, island yeah. vibes, romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couples retreat. What What does Along Came Polly have on Rotten Tomatoes? Look oh, it's up. it's. I bet you it's much well, higher. Guess, guess. I'm gonna guess. Um, I'm guessing. F- I'm gonna guess sixty one. I'm guessing forty three. 27. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. They don't like what? comedies. They, they don't like comedies. Rotten Tomatoes. They, they don't, don't like, like romantic comedies. I mean, the comedy. critics right. don't like I got rom- another the rom-coms. One. 50 first dates. I feel like that'll be higher. Let's guess. That's got to be first. higher. If Along Came Polly's 27, I'm going to guess 52. I'm going 43 again. 45. Close. Okay, okay. Uh, wow. Let's think of one. The I mean, Heartbreak what, Kid. The what Heartbreak could be Kid. What What the heartbreak kid with ben stiller i know it's just not what i, I wouldn't have gone there <laughs> what you, how much who's have even you seen? who's even the other person in the heartbreak what do, kid what do you guess malin ackerman oh yeah, yeah 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 what do i guess for the heartbreak kid honestly if it's if it is higher than couples retreat i'm gonna be so pissed because i honestly think, think the highest i think the heartbreak kid is so uh mm. overrated i mean i don't people don't yeah. really talk about it but uh, what is it fucking 15 percent I'm going to go with 35. 29. Okay. It has 29% and Couples Retreat has 10%. Are I mean, you fucking cu- cu- there's serious? There's not going to be a lot of movies yeah, below no, Couples Retreat. Yeah, like, yeah. That's Couples Retreat low. is pretty much as low okay, as it gets. I don't think I've ever Retreat heard of... Couples Retreat is arguably a, a better movie a than rom-com The Heartbreak Kid. In the I'm, I'm searching single digits. rated comedies on Rotten Ron Tomatoes. I want rom-coms though because comedies rom-coms are different. Okay. Yeah, co- comedies I'm Top thinking The Hangover, rom- Step Brothers, yeah, yeah, like Wedding Crashers. Comedies you'll get some high ones. I'm talking romantic comedies. Right. Romantic. There's not really a lot of I feel like critically acclaimed romantic comedies that would be that high live up. in the same area of Along Came Polly. The you know right, that are like hey, um, like what's like like ten uh, 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 oh. Have you ever seen Wimbledon? Uh, yeah, I'd like that movie. Sixty one percent. That is a good movie. That is a good movie, but it's just crazy that that's I'm higher than at, all these other ones. Um, it seems like the the best the highest rated rom coms are all in like the sixties. But I'm, uh, I, I don't see old that. Old movies. Pretty Woman, 64. Yeah, I mean, even the um, classics are very are low. Sleeping with Other People, 63. Okay. Uh, what about like... Five-year engagement, 64. I bet what all about like sleepless are going to be like, Seattle. Like, 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 so, like Sleepless in Seattle. Like, like or... Uh, you Got uh, Mail. Yeah, You Got Mail. Or um, what's the one with Meg Ryan and uh, so, oh, Billy wow. Crystal? Sleepless in Seattle, yes. 
your reaction made yeah. me think that it's good. 70%. 68%. 75 Wow, that's, that's high. Wow, so that's what about you got, Mel? Can you, I, I, I'll, I'm going to search too, because I, why can't I think of what movie? You got mail. You've got mail, guess. Um, you got mail. 54. 67. 70. Oh, 70. okay. So when Harry are, met Sally, that's what I want. Oh, when uh, Harry met uh, Sally, that's got to be last high one. up there. Last one. That's when the Harry best rom-com of all time. When Harry met Sally, I'm going to clock it at 77. No, no. You're, that's the best rom-com of all time. I, I know, but we're still getting Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going so 82. No, so like. What did you say? 82. 91. 91. 91. Okay, okay. okay. one so more. So then, then that's all. That's really what I wanted to yeah, know. That's like, like, which ones like are that high? Of like, oh, yes. one, that's like iconic. Right. One more. I think more. that's used in like film school as like the perfect yeah. Rom- yeah, romantic comedy. The Wedding Singer. That is not going to be. You don't think that one's going to that? You don't think that's going to be high? I don't think so. I don't think any of Adam Sandler movies are, are that high. Guess, guess. I'm going to guess 45. 51. 69. Wow. I see. I, you guys had me second guessing, and I felt like it was. I think The Wedding Singer is a great. I just kind great of assumed romantic that if, if 50 First Dates was that low, that. But The Wedding Singer is yeah. better than 50 First yeah. Dates. Yeah. I suppose. I personally like 50 First I mean, Dates better. More. Really? Yeah. Well, 50 I was about First Dates is, is newer. It's going to be low. <laughs> what? I don't that's know. That's not I true. Just feel like I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking I think of movies that's that not true. I E.T. Know her in, and I yeah. like. <laughs> her but i'm i just feel like they're all I, how did we get here fever, i have no idea fever pitch <laughs> <laughs> how did we get here fever I, pitch i have oh no you idea. said good things and i brought up along yeah, game right, Polly. Right, wow right. that and just we took a turn yep, right yep. Yep. I mean, yep. fever this. pitch has a 65 so it's like that's pretty fever high. pitch is a no, like people shit on fever pitch I but fever pitch it. is a good movie i enjoy fever it. pitch great movie and the people who shit on it just shit on good things yeah they just they just you are know like, what? oh, this is a good movie. I'm going to shit on it I because it I'm a good. Yankees fan. Oh, yeah. yeah, But all Boston people, people say. shit on it so much. Boston people right. totally because do. It's, I feel like they're like, this, cheese, isn't, this isn't. It's cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's right. cheesy. Like Boston yeah. And what, guy um, doesn't make sense. Yeah. What's the... What's <laughs> what's the Freddie Prince Jr. Jessica Biel baseball movie? Summer... Uh, uh, summer... Summer... Pitch? Summer Pitch, I think. Uh, <laughs> is it? Summer cat. Summer, Summer cat. <laughs> <laughs> that has. Ooh, you know, like this. Okay, Summer guess, catch. guess what that has. I've never seen it. But. Um. God, I don't know if it's going to be really low or really high. I think high. Sixty-one. Wait, is it lower than Couples Retreat? Because you said I'd like it. Yeah, yeah. This this could be eight. N- this could be a seven percent. Eight. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't even know why I went high <laughs> when I know that that would be a a movie that people would hate. But I love that movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. Summer All right, Catch. Well, I don't I know like how we ended up here, but Rotten Tomatoes is a scam. Have you never <laughs> seen Summer Catch? No, but I I'm reckon- not going to now. No, no, no. Well, actually, I, I mean, it's Couples one, Retreat. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's also maybe one Freddie Prince Jr love but mm-hmm. jessica Biel, jessica Biel, you don't know who freddie prince oh jr freddie prince jr no i know the she's name, all that and nope, freddie prince jr Scooby-Doo. i mean you've seen the scooby-doo movies like live action yeah, yeah. like those. i don't think i've seen the live action you don't know who freddie prince jr is you've never not the ones with sarah michelle geller and and <laughs> and uh um you who's know the sarah one sarah michelle geller is the one and freddie prince jr they've been together for years who's the one oh. we love from um dead to me not Christina Applegate. I don't know who Sarah Michelle. I'm looking at a picture of her. I don't know who that is. Who are you talking oh, about? I'm dead oh. to me. It's Christina Applegate. Oh, and oh. Uh, why? I feel like whenever you blank on something, that automatically I blank on it, even though even I would have known. Judy Linda, Greer. Li, li, Linda, Linda, <laughs> Linda Cardellini. Cardellini, yeah. Linda Cardellini. Who's Judy Greer? <laughs> Judy Greer is the best friend in every romantic comedy. She's in 13 Going on 30. <laughs> She's yes. in, yeah. yeah. I, Linda Cardellini. Yeah. Yes. Linda Cardellini plays... Um, Oh, for, Thir- this is, I mean, <laughs> just, just, let's talk about something else. 13 going on 30, guys. Why, I, why am I spacing on her she, character's name now? Daphne? No. <laughs> Freddie? Daphne? V- uh, Velma. Velma. Jesus Christ. 13 going on 30, 65. Like. Well, that's a great movie. 
Yeah. Coming to America. I, anyway, Summer Catch is good. And I was going to say Jessica Biel. It's, it's oh, wait, one, did, She's incredibly hot. Did we ever, in, yeah. did we ever well, look? Did you even know that Freddie, you don't even know Freddie Prince Jr. His dad is Freddie Prince, who was a wildly yeah. famous comedian and uh, uh, highly Maybe respected and then the unfortunately name. died in a tragic Freddie way. Freddie Prince Jr. You, nothing. Not like, did you no. Google him? I did, Googled he, did you his, recognize I him? I Googled the woman and I don't recognize her. What? You don't even recognize her? Buffy the no. Vampire Slayer? Oh, Cruel Buffy Intentions? The, oh, Buffy the Vampire? Is she Buffy? Yes. yes. Oh, well, I know that, but Cruel she Intentions? looks totally different on the pictures that came up. Do you know Cruel Intentions? I know. I mean, I know the yeah. name. I've never seen it. I mean, Freddie Prince Jr. is shocking to me. I feel like uh, that's he, I mean, a pretty universal name. Yeah. He's in some great 90s. I haven't 90s. seen any movies that he's in, I think. Maybe you, I saw the Scooby-Doo. I, I mean, you've I'd never be seen shocked if you didn't that. see the, if you haven't seen the Scooby-Doo movies. I'm looking up um, the holiday because the holiday has a 49 percent and love actually has a 64 percent. Yeah, no, I, I I knew that. We've talked about that already. Yeah. What does she's all that have? I got two more movies and then we're ending this conversation. She's all that, and then Cruel Attentions. Cruel she's Intentions, all that. I think is high. Are you gonna guess or? She's all that. I'm gonna guess is like a 42. I'm gonna guess 62. 40. Okay, 40. Yeah, it seems like it would live in that area. Cool yeah. intentions. Um, the first one, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm going 72. Yeah, I think cool intentions might be high. 75? 55. Oh, wow. really? Interesting. I would expect it to be higher. But maybe just because that's another one that's like a little bit of a cult following type right, movie. Right, and right. those always are kind of like on the lower side for the for the critics. Okay. All right, great conversation wow, about that movies took a and long to me. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> no, it's just it's very okay. interesting to see when because there's so many of those movies faith? that you love, like that you watch. Like you know, watch she's all that a billion times. I have no, I don't know that oh, movie. Oh, that's a good no. one. Edward Norton and Ben Stiller, and like one's a rabbi, one's a priest, and like they're they both love the same girl. Sixty nine percent. I would recommend that. All right, well, I you know, good score, but yeah. can we trust them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, because it's like you're when you grow up watching like Summer Catch. I watched all the time. I was obsessed, <laughs> like loved it. But it's just one of those teen '90s movies that you watch and like love when you're older, and then realize like when it came out, everybody hated it. <laughs> yeah, like everyone was like, "This isn't a good movie." But it just takes some time, and then when you go back and watch, like it's cheesy and awesome and great. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot of movies where you think they're so good growing up, and you go back and watch them like that. Ah. Yeah, that wasn't it. Yeah, but let's get into the topics for today's episode. We have a fun episode because we got Jam-packed. yeah, we got three main topics. Pete Davidson is finally moving out of his mom's house in Staten Island. Kim Kardashian is officially a billionaire, and Shailene Woodley and Aaron Rodgers made their Instagram debut on live. We also have beat Rhea and Fran trivia, and a great interview with Margaret Josephs from Real Housewives of New Jersey for well all balanced. of our Bravo fans out there. Yeah, we're covering it all. So yeah. let's get into it. Starting off with Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson has officially moved out of his mother's house in Staten Island into his own apartment condo in complex Staten Island. <laughs> in Staten Island. Like yeah. he's not moving out of Staten Island. Pete Davidson is Staten Island. Yeah. He, and that, I, the king one might yeah, say. He pff, nailed it. Oh Thank my you. God, you nailed that one. Yeah. What does that have on Ron? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm no, kidding. No, no, We're not going down. We're, I have we to are not. No. <laughs> we are not continuing this Come path. On, guess, guess. Okay, the King of Staten Island, I think he's got a a 48%. No, no it's no. way high. It, that was like critically that. I know, critically acclaimed. I know. I, 74. 75. Yeah. All right. Well, Pete Davidson, the king of Staten Island, has moved out of his mom's basement. He's got his own place now. He said it was about time. He said it's one of those things that his mother was never going to tell him to leave, so he had to go. He said that on Valentine's Day, they they spent the night watching a movie and eating chocolate (laughs) together, and he said, one of us has to go. (laughs) One of us has to go. And I'm just picturing that go down, and that's just hilarious to me. I also think it creates the image even better for Pete Davidson of yeah. this man that we've all fallen in love with over the past few years. We're like, Pete Davidson, he's so awkward and cute and funny and he also loves his mom. Yeah. Like he just, usually it's like when somebody won't move out of their mom's basement, it, right. it's deemed as unattractive and it's like, oh, you live in your mom's basement, you're a troll. 
Pete Davidson living in his mom's basement is endearing. They're like, yeah. oh, sweet Pete Davidson. But it was about time. And it made sense. It just fit his persona. Because not only was he living, like, yes, he was living in his mom's basement, but in a house that he bought for his mom. You know, like that, If it's another thing if he's living in his mom's basement and his mom's paying for everything mm-hmm. and like he doesn't have his own money you know he he has his own career his own money he bought the house and then made himself his you know downstairs apartment but even in that situation it's like now here's the time for mom to fully enjoy the house for herself like this was a gift for you uh i, I it's time that i leave the basement not not going far he's still on staten island uh there's some pictures of the condo building online looks lovely as a nice terrace he's got views of the verrazano <laughs> i bet pete davidson is gonna be like wow a kid in a candy shop with his new right. apartment being like right. oh, my mom's not in the house anymore i can have right. girls over I can have whenever. friends over he's yeah not, he's dating daphne from bridgerton can play music whenever phoebe, i want phoebe dying yeah. for they're they're apparently they're dating right now they're trying to make long distance work I feel like pete davidson's not a long distance guy that's just the hunch i get I feel like when he's in yeah. he's in but maybe the long distance keeps Could that help. space it's definitely keeps the space and i also think long distance too pushes him even more to be like I can't have her fly from London to come stay in my mom's basement. Like it's yep. one thing if you, the girl he's dating lives in the area and they can do other things and go do to you other think places. Part of that was like the charm of it, though. Like, oh, this guy lives in his mom's basement to a like, certain extent. But innocent. I bet, I bet Kate Beckinsale real didn't want to go to. But you know, That's crazy. Kate yeah. Beckinsale she, the same age as his mom. Uh, probably is probably around the same age and it's probably like oh we're going back to your mom's basement and then when he was with ariana grande i feel like they just stayed at ariana's I place he's yeah. ever brought those people back i bet he went to a hotel oh definitely well, i'm saying and they also live like i think enough of these women lived around the new york area or had places around the new york area where they never had to go back to his place but phoebe doesn't live here so mm-hmm. when she comes to visit unless they're going to stay at a hotel he, they got to go somewhere and it can't be he's done it can't be his mom's basement it's going to be his luxury condo i feel like the the women that were going to Pete davidson's mom's house were the women that we were not seeing in in the news right, right like right. the women yeah. that are going to Pete davidson's yeah. house are the women that are get, having one night stands right with Pete yeah. davidson. Grande. well i mean at some point she probably got to that oh level of course because they were engaged yes. but at yeah, the eventually she, like... met, she met his mother and went to the house, and I'm sure they had a lovely Staten Island meal and then, yeah. and whatever. But yeah. this is good for Pete Davidson. I always I always like getting an update from Pete Davidson himself, you know, because a lot of the times we're just getting articles about Pete, yeah. hearsay, people, yeah, sources say. When Pete is actually saying these things himself, yeah. it always makes it more enjoyable. Definitely, definitely. So I'm I'm excited for him. I hope he has a fun time. Yeah, moving. Should we get Pete a housewarming gift? Own, his getting his own space and yeah. What should we get him? What, what would, is, what's your go to housewarming? Is he gift? smoking again? I don't know. You know, you never know, know with Pete. That's. I feel like we would have to just go safe, safe, safe zone. Bet. Yeah, some a safe a safe gift. I think a I cool think, gift for yeah. Pete Davidson's new apartment would be one of those old gaming things you know like from an an arcade yeah yeah i don't know i feel like like that fits pete davidson's vibe like an arcade like a pac-man oh you're thinking uh like the big giant thing that you would see in the arcade yes yeah okay I was thinking like a Nintendo 64. Imagine if that like, just showed oh, up. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking oh, like, a, like, like, like a console. Like, you know, like if a, we weren't, if we were, Atari or if something. we were just acquaintances with Pete, that would be a cool gift. Like, yeah. It, whatever. But if we're Those good friends. Those things are fucking expensive. Yeah, no. Games. If we're good, we could split it for Pete. Yeah. Like, we, if we were good friends with Pete, we'd get him a big arcade game fucking thing that he could put in his apartment. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good gift. Yeah, keep that but in mind. But who knows? Maybe he's trying, in your back pocket. Maybe he's trying to keep this place a little bit more adult you could still be adult and fun of course but it's gonna be like uh, that sounds like something he would maybe have in his mom's basement and maybe not in this new apartment but why not i feel like in it if your apartment is decorated nice yeah and then you have a fun little area or fun things here and there. It's right. not like the whole place is a fun house. Right, right. But you have a nice apartment and then you're like, oh my God, a Pac-Man machine. This is sick. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Classy. I hope, someone, I hope someone gets this for him. Classy but trashy. Yeah. In Staten Island. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Guys, Kim Kardashian is officially a billionaire, and there is no way any of us are going to be billionaires unless we pay off our, our student loans, okay? There's just no way any of us are getting there until we get rid of our student loans. And with today's low interest rates, it's a great time to refinance your student loans with Ernest. Ernest offers a low rate student loan refinancing and you could check your rate risk free in just two minutes. With Ernest, you get radically flexible payments and you could pick your loan term. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into a simple monthly payment. And if you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Ernest for help, which is always key. You want to be able to get that help quick and easy. Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. You you can refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash chicks. Terms and conditions apply. Once again, Ernest is giving our listeners a $100 bonus. You can refinance your student loans at earnest.com slash chicks. Terms and conditions apply. Once again, I will repeat it once again for you guys. You get a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash chicks to refinance your student loan. Not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. Visit earnest.com slash chicks for more details. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinancing made by Earnest Operations, LLC and MLS number 1204917. California refinancing law license numbers 6054788303 second suite 401 North San Francisco, California 94107. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. Kim Kardashian is officially a billionaire. I almost said Kim Kardashian I West. Know, I know. I almost said that, but yeah. not the case anymore. Kim Kardashian, she's officially a billionaire. I feel like I was going to say I feel like people have been waiting for this day, but who's really I feel like was, almost was in a, a way it was like when is Kim going to be a billionaire right. because Kylie was deemed a billionaire so this is big things kim has accomplished so many things it's in only her a life. matter of time only a matter of time i think back to when paris hilton said in her documentary and she was talking with her sister and she said that she feels like she would never be able to take a break until she was a billionaire mm-hmm. and i wonder and i feel like they take breaks all the time they take vacations yeah. but they're never fully not working i wonder now when you reach billionaire status is that the case? Do you say, "Hey, I've, I'm a billionaire now. I can I can take a step back. I can ro- relax." Or are you like, "Fuck, I'm a billionaire now. Yeah. I can't stop. Uh, I need to go yeah. even further." I I think that there. If I had to guess, I would just think that if you do become a billionaire, there's so much pressure to stay a billionaire. You know, you're you're going to continue to work your ass off to to stay at that level, and also. And not that not that they're greedy or anything, but you know, greed's a funny, greed's a, an interesting thing mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, the more you have something, the more you're gonna want it. So yeah, the more money they have, uh, the more money they're just gonna want to have and and keep making and keep building and keep growing these businesses. And like I said, it was a, it was only a matter of time. Skims is huge. I'm sure Skims will be in stores across the world at some point. KKW Beauty, which I wonder. Of course, KKW Beauty is gi- is also ginormous. She'll keep the W, huh? Probably. I don't think she has a choice. I think you can't at this point change the entire brand. Right. The brand is KKW it, the brand, Beauty. It, it's KKW. Yeah. It doesn't say Kim Kardashian West Beauty. KKW yeah. Beauty. It is her kid's last name. So yeah, she yeah. has that. Yep. You know, it was a part of her life. So I feel like it's not so whoa. I also saw that she's thinking about getting into the skincare space, which to me seems... I'm trying to keep my billionaire status, which of course she's going to be. But I feel like once you hit that billionaire mark, what what is that? It's like you just hit it and then it could go either way or, you know, I mean, all really realistically, it's only going to go up. But yeah, I feel like to solidify that spot, she's she's going to try to get into skincare. I'm not calling myself a billionaire, but, you know, somebody who has come across some winnings the past month, Mm. I, I got we won the 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 bitcoin yep um not the full bitcoin we won part of a bitcoin for march madness yep last night i won 10k me and hank won 10k so 5k each for a bet that we did at barstool me and right. hank versus jet ski and za uh for the national championship we had baylor they won by a lot so we got 10k 
I won two hundred dollars in scratch offs this weekend. Right. I feel Which hot also, right now. And just I'm to clarify, only Dave more. just like made that himself. Like, because I, yeah. I feel like sometimes we say this stuff with the things that work, and and people are like, "Well, how did that even happen?" It's like Dave just no. Said Dave, it. Well, <laughs> uh, somebody here got sick, got yeah. Corona, yeah. and so and they're a gambler, and they would usually do Brandon Walker. Right. They would normally they would do normally stream. do the stream. Yeah. Uh, I obviously don't really do the gambling stuff, obviously. And this was just something that Dave cooked up in his head. He said, all right, yeah. I'll have the couple versus Zahn Jetski. Yeah. Winner. It was funny. 10K. I watched the, the stream, like, at the very beginning. They scored, like, the first point of the game. And you were like, yes. Like, it's like <laughs> well, I was long excited. 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But by the end, I was like, nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, it was also yeah. kind of a blowout in some aspects. No, it was so. not close one time. Right. So. But that's like, besides yeah. the point. I now feel like I'm chasing this high. I'm like, where is my next well, money hit? There you go. Because you're on a, you're on a I, much I, lower I'm, level than billionaire, no, no, no. but you're still seeking I, I, out. Exactly. The, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Imagine getting that much money. You're yep. only seeking it out more. I, I'm. Yep. You got to pull a Vinny Chase and like the next time you're at a casino, just like put everything on red oh, or whatever he did. I mean, no, if you black. didn't think that I was going to be hitting up a casino this weekend and throwing mm. something out there. You're wrong. I got my magic crystal on lock. Yeah. And Fran already Lucky texted crystal. me. Fran already texted me right after and said, we must hit a casino. Yeah. So Wait, where did you, what is this crystal? Like, where did you get it? <sighs> okay. Well, I, it's hard to explain. I don't know. This is, this is shitty of me. I don't know the exact name of it. And I really wish I did. I want to say it, but I don't want to get it wrong. So I won't. My sister is very, very into crystals and manifestation and, and all of that those yeah. things and she kind of has moon. yeah but you know all of it you know and so she's very into it and has given me a whole bunch of crystals that's not the only crystal <laughs> i have i have a crystal for every occasion yeah yeah and i'll have to send her a picture of the crystal and be like which what is this it? one yeah, which yeah, one yeah. whatever so i sent her i had a feeling because they had told me my mom's kind of into into it too they'd given this crystal to me for christmas and they were like carry this around with you it's supposed to be like a good luck crystal mm-hmm. at all times and i don't carry it around with me which is uh now my mistake yep but i will say so this was christmas of last year when they gave it to me not this past christmas this crystal has helped me now two times where i have went out of my way to hold this crystal and like manifest on mm-hmm. it the first time was norman Mm-hmm. When I wanted Norman, I was like, the, the the people I was getting Norman, they were like, no, you know, somebody else is getting him. We yeah. We're going to give it to somebody else. And I wanted Norman so bad. And so I did like a manifestation holding this crystal the next morning. They text me. They're like, you got, you got the dog. So last night I was like, oh my well, God. Zap put a curse on you, right? No, he, the, he was joking around about uh, it. But I was like, oh, that reminds me. Yeah. I sent a picture to my sister. I said, is this the crystal? So she said, yes. And then she said that she also was going to do a manifestation prayer thing to help us out. And yeah. all of a sudden it was, it was kickstarted. So I'm, I got my faith in this crystal right now. Yeah. And I'm like Kim K. I'm looking for my next high of money. I am just. You got to watch that. Someone might try to steal that. Right. No, but it's one of those things you can get. It's the, it's a, yeah. it's the crystal. You can literally go buy it in a store. It's just, I forget yeah. the name of it. But it might be that I'm gonna text crystal. my sister what the name is because now I feel like I well, need to know. Well now it's just it. it's gonna it's gonna Do you think that now you are gonna carry it around with you or do you think always having it with you is almost gonna make it lose yeah, its power? Like, yeah. Like you're like, you're, like because you're gonna overuse it, you're not only using it for special occasions. Hank and I were talking about that. There was a period of time where I just left it in my my purse and okay. forgot about it. Okay. So but it's already it's been one of those things where like it doesn't you don't but access it, the power unless you like think yeah, about it yeah i think that is true like you gotta like manifest on it um and you also need to recharge it so where it sits in my house in my apartment is it just sits in the window in the sun yeah. and you're supposed to charge your crystals in the sun and the moon and all that stuff so i feel like it had been sitting in the sun since the norman thing mm. and it had it's you know just, it had all the strength it was it really was charged charging up. really it's charging. charged up and it's ready to go and now i'm kim k almost on my way to billionaire status yeah we're <laughs> so close we're so close and i feel um, like it's okay point. it's almost okay i feel like it would be obnoxious if i was just like bragging about money in general right if i was just like i'm making yeah. money like these are just things this i'm was winning luck out of, of luck. luck i'm just the draw. winning what out of you know luck of the draw so yep no let's I, hope for the best absolutely absolutely um and then what did oh i wanted to mention this because we spoke about this last podcast briefly um I'd seen a photo of Khloe Kardashian unedited that had been up. Mm-hmm. We thought it was posted on MJ's account. It's, it was this whole thing. I couldn't find the picture. I, I, I 
it's it's everywhere now because it's like a national news story. Um, and so Rhea has seen it, and basically, it seems like the Kardashian team, perhaps someone at KKW Beauty, there's screenshots of Tracy Romulus. Their friend and who you it's know who works the, for it's them. It's called the Clear Courts, by the way. Oh, okay. Clear That's courts. the course. Well, just if anybody wants to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Tracy had reached out to one of these Instagram accounts that had posted and said, like, asking for it to be taken down, and it was posted accidentally. And it's very the the background of it. I don't really care about as much. It's like a little bizarre. Mm. I don't I don't really get how we went from like MJ posted this to like now they're saying an an assistant accidentally posted it but copy there's like cuz of copyright infringement like take it down. I I don't know. It's it's it just seems like this picture somehow was put up started to spread and Chloe didn't want it. Chloe didn't want anybody seeing it. I would assume that would be Chloe's decision. And I I'm not surprised that Chloe wouldn't want it out. However, it's sad that that's the case. Because like I said to you, she looks great. Like she looks amazing, but it is an unfiltered photo. It just shows you that everything that they do post on their own Instagram is nip, tucked, clean, smooth, filter, like everything. And you're getting the perfect image. And this was her looking like she works her ass off working out she's got her abs she looks great but there's no you know not all the fancy altering of this of her skin and smoothing everything out and it's just like a little more real life but I guess that's something that she that she doesn't want out there I don't know see to me that's really sad because I feel like it would be a whole other way for the Kardashians to relate to people I feel yeah. like that's almost where they miss the boat sometimes that's one that, of that's the most that's it, I think it's the biggest thing yeah. that they're they have created these bodies that are unrelatable not, completely unrelatable no one can have those right bodies. their bodies are not relatable not, nothing about them is relatable to be completely honest yeah. literally nothing about them whatsoever you know their lifestyle the money yeah. that they had nothing about it is relatable but I feel like they are missing the boat big time on that because if they were honest and Khloe Kardashian was honest and all of them were honest especially in the scenario now that it's it's like coming to light right. more more people would respect them and be like, okay, they are not yeah. just these robots that go about their life every single day and are so perfect. It, it's it's harming uh, it's in sad. a way. It, and it's because, sad because, because it, it's, people yeah. do, uh, young women who are very impressionable see mm. these photos of them and think, oh, that is actually you can you can get mm -hmm. that you there there's a goal there you can get right. that there's a natural that, way to get that the, but there's, there's not. not there's yeah. not the natural way it you know chloe kardashian in the unedited photo is like that she looks like she worked she goes to the gym yeah she works her ass off she does whatever it takes to get that body and that's great and that is possible you can get there yeah you cannot get there's a some perfect involved. uh smooth but that doesn't exist in real no, life no, like no. that the people have texture to their skin yeah that is a fact you know yeah. you're not going to see somebody in real life and their body's going to look fucking smooth, smooth as a baby's as bottom. baby's bottom unless they're really lotioning up really oiling <laughs> up and really putting in the work yeah. in there's texture there's cellulite there's things yeah. that are just very natural, natural to even the people that are in the best shape of their lives mm -hmm. still have all these things so to me i think it's it's harming and it's it, it's sad. It's more so just it like is sad. they think that they can't just be themselves because I'm sure they think, okay, we've built an empire on being these types of people. If we're, you know, if we're even honest for a second, if we're even show the real selves for a second, you know, people yeah. aren't going to, we're not the Kardashians anymore. But that's just not true. People will relate to them so much more. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's sad that this is the way it's gone down but it's just because and i i just think because chloe has been in this cycle where her looks have been criticized so much recently she's talking about it on the uh keeping up right now like that people have just been analyzing every photo she posts and looking at all these different things and you know there's definitely been some posts where you're like what is that chloe what's happening mm -hmm. here and so I can't imagine what her mental state is about it. But from an outside perspective, you would think, oh, that picture gets out. You would hope that maybe we're in the day and age where she could be like, yeah, this is my body. Unfiltered. I love it. Like, this is me. 
Mm-hmm. However, if that's not the case and she wants it taken down, that's also her prerogative. It's a photo of herself. It's it's her image. And if she sees it and is, is doesn't want it out there, that is also, you know, that's her decision. But it is sad because I think that her, I think she has this warped view of potentially her own self now because of how criticized she's been and people have criticized how she looks like the the I didn't realize this was going to blow up as much as it did when I spoke to you about it last episode and I didn't realize there would be you know page six daily mail us weekly all these articles being like Kardashian team is cracking down trying to take down this photo of Chloe from the internet removing it from the internet and then I see these articles on the Daily Mail. I'm like, no wonder she wants to take it down. The Daily Mail, the headline's like, the photo Chloe doesn't want you to see. And it's smack dab, mm-hmm. like the first thing. And not only is the, you know, the photo there, but they posted like a side-by-side toggle like thing that basically is half of the unedited photo and half of a photo from her Instagram, both of both like of her in a bikini. And there's like a little middle tab thing that you can slide so you can like bring it. So you're fully looking at the unedited picture, Mm -hmm. fully looking at the Instagram picture, maybe go halfway and compare where she changed things. And that is so harmful. Mm -hmm. Not only to Chloe, but for other women who look at that, that tool and think like, oh man, like my hips kind of look like the unedited side, but the one on the right side looks so much nicer. How do I get it like that? Like right. it, it's it's really, and for Chloe herself, I can't, like that's probably so hard too. You think you'd want it just to be out there so people stop creating this side-by-side image because her Instagram for so long has clearly been edited. Yeah, it, it's also damaging. That is, that is very damaging, especially yeah. like you said, I'm sure Chloe doesn't feel great herself seeing that and other people seeing it. And it's also one of those things that people need to remember as well. And this in this circumstance is, is totally different. I don't think this comes down to angles. I think this comes down to a lot of editing and, and smoothing yeah. and all that. But people do look different in different angles. And I For feel sure. like that's something that goes missed talked about on social media sometimes when they do a side by side of certain and I'm not talking about this incident with Khloe Kardashian but with a lot of celebrities they'll post this was the picture they posted on Instagram and then this is the picture of them and on the beach in the wild and it's like you could see they have the same body type yeah it's just a different angle it's a different side you're not seeing a full 3d view of somebody on Instagram you're seeing like one angle of it so I feel like that's also important to remember and also just from speaking on the side of like saying you know they they should be more real and y- mm. if Chloe doesn't want this out there you're right whatever she doesn't want it out there yeah and if you think about it the everyday average person walking this earth who's not a Kardashian would they want a full natural state of themselves picture out there who right. knows right not, like not that they didn't put out you know like that they didn't put out themselves right exactly like somebody so your friend your friend snaps a photo of you on snapchat you you don't feel comfortable yourself other people may see it and not think anything of it which is i think how we are viewing this situation where we're looking at chloe and we're like but it's chloe she looks great but chloe herself doesn't feel comfortable and like you said she's been talking a lot about her looks and being in the in the you know spotlight for so long will do that for you so i feel like that's also something to remember like your friend takes a Snapchat of you, an Instagram story of you, and sure. you're like, I, I don't want that out there. Please don't put it. Your friend's like, you look fine. Yeah, you yeah. look fine. You, Everyone's been in that situation. Absolutely. Somebody takes a, you look fine. You look fine. You're like, well, I don't think I look fine. Yeah. So please yeah. don't, I don't want that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes, definitely. I, it makes me sad just also from a bigger, not even about Chloe specifically, but just from the idea that how like psychologically editing your photos a lot will affect the way that you see yourself because mm-hmm. I'm just thinking like imagining every photo you post on Instagram you are face tuning and editing up the wazoo where like you almost are kind of like you're building a human being mm-hmm. And then when you look at a different photo or you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I don't like the way I look. Well, because you spent years doctoring your body to look like something else. And that'll fuck with you. That'll really mentally fuck with you. So I almost feel like there is a situation there, too, where it's like Chloe and she's talked publicly about editing Mm -hmm. her photos and and face tuning and things like that. So 
when you just do it for so long, it has to have uh, a mental effect on you. I think editing your, like, because, uh, listen, we, I smooth my skin. Yeah. I've whitened my teeth. Yeah. I've done all of that before, right? Put a filter on, all mm-hmm. of a sudden your skin looks better. I have never altered my body in a photo. And mm-hmm. to me, I think that is crazy that people do that. And I understand why people do it. And I think it's sad. But I, yeah. I, I hope that people just realize, like you said, once you start doing that, it's a slippery, it, slope. It's a slippery slope because you are always then going to be confused about how you f- about what you look like, mm. uh, your body. You're always going to be like, what does my body actually look like mm-hmm. when you're looking at a photo that you changed your body in and then looking at yourself in the mirror? Yeah. I feel like that is where it gets real crazy. Right. Like the bot, like people actually changing their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for for chloe this clearly blew up in a way that she didn't expect I, like i said i don't really get the the assistant accidentally po- posted it where where like where where did this go right. that somebody i don't know so it's the beginning of it it's all very confusing but clearly chloe didn't want it out there and it's the seeing like and i believe the screenshots are real i don't i don't know for a f- total fact but like to see the the screenshots of tracy and someone also claimed that kim had reached out as well i don't know if that one was real I, but i could see tracy being the one doing it and sounding off off for them of not wanting wanting the picture out there it's pretty wild you know what's also wild and we haven't talked about this i feel like as much the filters on the instagram stories that people use mm-hmm. are crazy Oh, yeah. I see it. I go through my Instagram stories and I'm like, how do people actually put this up and are like, okay with it? Like they they put up an Instagram story using this filter that like makes you have like the Instagram model face or whatever it's called. Yeah. And completely changes their face. Yeah. Puts it up and they think not they just think of nothing of it. Like I, I just I'm like, how do people not think? okay, this looks nothing like me. I'm not I'm not going to put this filter up. It also says I'm using the filter. Or people will put the filter, film it, save it, and then re-upload the video so that it, right, doesn't, so it doesn't say it has a filter, that yeah. there's a filter out yeah. there. Be careful of that, everybody. Yeah. Look out for that. If you think you're watching somebody's store and you're like, wow, they look, how did that happen? Yeah. I mean, mindful people do are beautiful. Ever, you no, know what I mean? Of, of course, of course but they when can there's be, like a sepia tone right, and like right, her, right. She, yeah, it's like there's a and total their eye color looks like a little, and they all just, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like they saved that video yeah. and then re-uploaded it so that you wouldn't see that there was a filter on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, something I'm, I'm curious if in- Instagram will try and like crack down on more i don't know there's some love using it wild filters out there crazy yeah that like really just totally change you everything d- about d- you it, 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 you turn into a brat stall yeah yeah it is crazy because the the ones that the kardashians do use like i just feel like sometimes they put the filter on and i'm like they, they look they look somehow how do they look good with this like because i think i i've tested a bunch of them and i've been like that's terrifying. I can't. I don't want anybody to see that. Right. I saw Kylie put up a, a video the other day where she had all the filters on, and in my head I was like, she she looks like Kylie Jenner though. Why is she putting right, right. these filters on her face? And then the next slide was time for no filter. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, okay, well she kind of just looks the same because yeah. they already have that yeah. that look to them. Yes. They're yeah. They have the, the makeup and whatnot. Yeah. To so I don't know. It's just, it was crazy. I couldn't believe that, you know, the two seconds that I said, talked about it last episode, that it blew up to this massive thing. Definitely. And people are talking about it on TikTok all over. So, yeah. I am always opening up the Chicks in the Office DMs and I'm seeing everybody ask for the FIGS promo code. Don't worry, guys. We still have it for you. FIGS celebrates the 100% awesome healthcare professionals by making scrubs that actually feel excited about wearing. They're not boxy, itchy, cotton scrubs. Figs are ridiculously soft, engineered with athletic apparel functionality, which is a win-win. They're innovative. They're comfortable. They got tons of pockets for, for all your tools that you use as a medical 
professional. Figs also has proprietary phionics fabric with Silvador antimicrobial technology for odor control, fabric durability, four-way stretch, moisture wicking, anti-wrinkle, and once again, they are ridiculously soft, like I said. So if you are one of those awesome humans who work in healthcare, Figs wants you to wear the scrubs you deserve and enjoy 15% off your first order. My sister, she uses Figs. She loves it. She's a surgical tech. She and her whole office, they use Figs and they rave about it. She's always like so excited when she hears that we have Figs on as a sponsor because she says that Figs truly are the best scrubs. So once again, if you're not working on the front lines or maybe if you are, you can gift them to somebody. If you are, you can get them for yourself. Figs will give you 15% off if you use code CHICKS15 at checkout. Head to Wear Figs, that's W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S dot com, and enter our code CHICKS15 at checkout. Get ready to love your scrubs. Once again, wearfigs.com and enter our code CHICKS15 at checkout. Shailene Woodley and Aaron Rodgers have seemed to be, there seem to be on their couple, um, not necessarily, like a now, their debut. Like they're making their debut into society. <laughs> they are on Instagram. They're doing lives. They're on stories while they're walking around Disney World. They're showing some PDA. We had not seen any of this from them. I mean, we knew they were engaged from uh, Aaron Rodgers MVP award. Like it wasn't. He didn't even say her name. Mm-hmm. It was just like, oh, I, by the way, I'm engaged. So now they're out here on Instagram showing their love. Shailene Woodley is talking him up as the guest jeopardy host and it's it's a very interesting look into the life of a man that we know really solely football wise and not as much into like what his actual life is like and this was like is this what uh, is this how Aaron Rodgers is in real life like I've never seen him kind of laugh and make jokes in an Instagram story, you know? <laughs> yeah, this couple doesn't particularly spark my interest that much, I know but I, I, I know that people are very I into find them. It and fascinating. I, yeah, and I think people yeah. find it fascinating, and I think it's it's interesting for them to be on Instagram Live, and I thought the Instagram Live was funny because they're yeah. like, oh, we're doing it. We're, 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 we're live. Out there. We're here. We're <laughs> out there. So that's cute, and I'm happy for them. I, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not particularly interested in, in he had a man either bun of them, but no, it's like all of a sudden we have like it has this hipster Shailene Woodley man been hiding this whole time. We didn't know. Now's his time to shine. They're they're driving. Shailene's got her. She's got a dog dad hat on. They got the dog in the back seats. And it's also funny how excited she was about Jeopardy and like so said excited she had no about idea Jeopardy. What he actually did like well because it just kind of seems like that is. There and Rogers that that she knows and she kind of said that in her first interview when she talked about it too it was like I I know the nerd Aaron like I don't know football Aaron so it's like this is the Aaron Rodgers that she's with every day man bunch called him super sexy like it's just and they they were talking about Jeopardy she posted all these slides she, she was promoting to say Jeopardy that, like, he should become the permanent host on her story look I honestly he did a great job he, I did watch saying, like, I did watch his do first it, night like, on top of football oh I watched his first night he was fantastic and he it was so cute like he came out had his hair perfectly parted and gelled like it looked like he was going to his first day of school and was <laughs> all dressed up and ready to go Gotta live up to it um totally i thought he did a great job shailene promoted it. like he was making princess bride references in the instagram stories i'm like you aaron Rodgers making princess bride references i mean if you don't know princess bride though i feel like another great movie we have to look it up yeah princess i feel bride. like it's high 100% I just don't know like something about Aaron Rodgers referencing Princess Bride was just something I would have never expected <laughs> Ron Tomato what do you think um Princess guess. Bride I'll say it's gotta 93. be up there no it's got it's, it's 87 I'll go 89 97 wow oh my God. nearly perfect a nearly perfect nearly movie perfect movie Princess wow. Bride nice wow what a wonderful way to close out the topics. We finally almost hit perfection. It's the Princess Bride. And yeah. next up, more trivia. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> we have game two of Beat Rhea and Fran coming up. And if you're listening to this later in the day, it's Wednesday, hump day. Maybe it's time to pour yourself a drink. You want to you wanna start relaxing, chilling for the night. Well, don't miss out on making yourself a nice little cocktail 
preferably with New Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam Vodka is the official vodka of Barcel Sports. New Amsterdam is a premium 80-proof vodka made from fun, some of the finest quality grains from America's heartland. It is five times distilled for unparalleled smoothness and filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. We drank a lot of New Amsterdam when we were doing cutting stems because the cutting stems, you know, we got our Owens mixers. The Owens mixers combined with New Amsterdam vodka, fantastic. Personally, I'm one that likes a nice juice with vodka. I know that the Pink Whitney, very popular. You can also just get Pink Whitney um, from New Amsterdam vodka. It's, you know, just pink lemonade vodka, which people love. You can combine that. I like a nice grapefruit vodka, maybe the cucumber vodka. There's so many great things you can do at New Amsterdam, combining it um, with your favorite juice or, you know, if you're a straight up vodka kind of person, then you can also do that as well. It does have an extra smooth taste. So go check out uh, New Amsterdam Vodka. Make sure you are picking it up when you're headed to the liquor store. All right, everyone, we are back with our trivia segment, Beat Rhea and Fran. We got two new contestants up. We got Camille and Allie. They're from LSU. They're roommates. We are so excited to have them on today. And Fran is back in studio, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good about us as partners today. We were over Zoom last time. Yeah. You had COVID. You're over it. And yeah. I feel like we got I some confidence. I think we can try back. and telepathically do some answers perhaps absolutely it's uh, it, it's it's harder yeah, over zoom but thank is. you guys so much for joining us we're super super excited to do this um you know if you want to participate you can go to our instagram chicks in the office go to the story highlights and there's a form that you can fill out and noah will do the vetting process and pick some people so camille and ali welcome thank you guys for joining us Thank you guys yeah. for having us. Excited to be here. Yay. All right. No, do we want to do how we did this last time? We have to guess a number. Uh, yeah, let me pick a number. From one to ten. Okay. So uh, Noah's going to think of a number from one to ten. You guys each say what number you're, you're thinking of. If you're right, then you guys go uh, first. So Camille, why don't you start? Three. Nope. Go ahead. Um, six. Nope. Mm. Want to go? No, you go. Okay. Five. No. Shit. Seven. Come on. <laughs> okay, you guys go again. I, this is Camille. You go again. How are we doing this again? Nine. Wow, you guys are just. <laughs> no. Two. Okay, you got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. that was my other <laughs> choice. All right, you guys go first then. So we have 15 questions, right? 15 and whoever gets yep. the most out of 15. Yeah. Yep. Most points out of 15. So you guys will get the first question. And if you don't answer it correctly, then Fran and I have a chance to steal a point also, and vice versa. Yeah. You want to do 30 seconds or 45 seconds for most of the questions? Get 45, 45 seconds. 45 okay. seconds. Okay. There's some questions that I think you should have more time on. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. Um, well, we'll tr we trust your judgment. Yeah. Host, mm -hmm. Noah. Okay, Game first show. question. Game show man. Submitted by Shelby. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Shelby. The clock is going to start after I read the question. Okay. How many Harry Styles songs have a fruit in the title and what are they? Okay. Mm, Let's think. Ob the sugar. obvious one, Watermelon Sugar. Oh, geez. I'm trying to think of all the songs off the new album. Rhea's going to know this. <laughs> okay, so Watermelon Sugar. I'm just trying to go through the track list. Okay. I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this this show will make me feel stupid. <laughs> That's for last week. Mm, I feel like I can make like an educated guess on the number, but I couldn't make it. Yeah, them. I know. Well, I feel, I feel I'm, oh man. The only one I can Ten think seconds. of is watermelon sugar. Um, oh. I, yeah. Maybe they're trying to trick us and it is just one. Yeah. All right, well, that can be our guess. Three, All right, one, sure. Watermelon sugar. <laughs> Incorrect. Boo, I figured. Watermelon, watermelon sugar, sugar and kiwi. And cherry. Oh, oh cherry. I forgot cherry. about cherry. So oh, that's yeah. three. three. No Ki and kiwi's just yeah. called kiwi, kiwi's, right? Kiwi, yeah. watermelon sugar, cherry. I think this that's is the This is from only both, al all, all both albums. Yeah, I'll please yeah, okay. okay. So then I think that's I it. I think it's... Wait, let me go through the track list in my head, though. I think it's only three. Yeah, I don't really remember there being more seconds. than three. Kiwi. Final three, answer. but yes, three, and say them. Cherry, watermelon sugar, and kiwi. 
Good. Correct. Oh, Let's go. Nice. That's a good one. I would have been embarrassed. I would have actually. That. See, this is this is where being a team does help because I would not have gotten yeah, shy. You're, you're right. Totally you're right. spacing on cherry. All I could think of was kiwi in my head. All right. Okay. Question number two. Thank you, Katie. Thank for this you, question. Katie. This is to and Fran. <laughs> Which Fall Out Boy music video did Kim... This is multiple choice, by oh. the way. Did Kim Kardashian star in? A, Thanks for the Memories. B, Sugar, We're Going Down. C, Dance, Dance. D, This Ain't a Scene, It's an Arm of Thrace. Kim just posted this on her Instagram did story she? like last week. Really? Yeah, she did. And well, I didn't put the first I didn't story, play it right? with sound. It's God, not- God I, I, I remember going through the stories and being like, wow, I forgot Kim Kardashian was in a Fall Out Boy music video. And then I didn't turn the sound on, so I don't know what song it's, it is. It, it can't be the first three. I, I, I don't know why I feel confident in that, but I feel like I know the first three music videos, and I don't think it's either of those. Because they're seconds. all so famous and popular, it would be like, wow, Kim Kardashian was in that what song. Was, that what was D? D was. This ain't a scene, it's an arms race. I don't even know what that song is. I'm going with D. Final answer? Final okay. answer. Incorrect. No! Okay, it's you guys now. You were too confident on I that. I was too confident, but I'm the options again. A, okay, yeah. A, thanks for the memories. B, sugar, we're going down. C, dance, dance. D, this ain't a scene, it's an arms race. I am like 99 that it's thanks for the memories. Okay, go for it then. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Final answer? Yeah. Thanks for the memories. Correct. Oh, really? <laughs> really? I'm telling you, I, I, that's crazy. I, I, I mean, I didn't know. I just can't believe I specifically watched Kim post this on her Instagram story and didn't listen with the sound. I feel like everyone would be talking about that. I guess I don't know. Maybe I mean, I, I think everyone on. was talking about right. it when it happened but a also decade she ago. Wasn't as big. Yeah, back she then. was. True, yeah, yeah, true, true. yeah. It was like a cameo. Damn. Okay. Okay. This next one, I'm gonna give you guys a minute or. Yeah, I think a minute. A minute is good. Yeah. More than a minute is yeah. for the for the lis- minute, for the minute. listener. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's <laughs> too okay. much dead space. Um, okay. Name five spinoff shows of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Not my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh my! I feel What's ridiculous. What's the Scott Disick show? Oh. Does he have one? You're looking at two people who don't watch Keeping Up With Their Kids. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, that's tough. I know. I, um, I, I do not know. I got nothing. I don't either. Mm, I couldn't even name one spin-off okay, nothing? show. Okay, then it goes. <laughs> okay, okay. We got... The, the Miami one. Which okay, was, but this is where cool. this, is this is where, where it gets, gets tricky. tricky. We have to give the full. Yeah, give me a full. Okay, one. and which sisters? Yeah, because so I think it was Courtney, Courtney and Chloe. Courtney and Chloe take, take Miami. Miami. Courtney and Chloe take Miami. Kim, Kim and, and Courtney take New York. Chloe. I f- flip it like Disick. Flip it. Okay, so let's go with the, Courtney and Chloe oh. take Miami. <laughs> flip it like Disick. Life of Kylie. Life of Kylie. The New York one, we need to figure out who Which did sisters. the other two. And then we have to think of one more. Five. Um, Rob? Is Rob show count? What was Rob show? Chloe and Lamar's th- show. Oh, Clo- oh. Chloe and Lamar had a show, remember? Yeah. But what was it called? 30 seconds. I don't I don't know. What was what was Do you Rob, need the full what was, titles? What was yes. Rob's show? I don't remember Rob's show. I remember Chloe, Chloe and Lamar. I think Chloe and Lamar's was just called Chloe and Chloe Lamar. And Lamar. Chloe and Lamar. Okay, I think it was Kim <laughs> and, and and Courtney. Ten seconds. Courtney take New York. Yes, because of Scott Disick and he was okay, the Lord. Okay, that's where he became right. the Lord. Here we go. Flip it like Disick. Life of Kylie. Kim and Chloe. T- uh, no, no, no. Chloe and Courtney take Miami. Kim and Courtney take New York, and Chloe and Lamar. Correct. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> there were so many more than that too. Like, Wait, there's a lot. The other ones. Uh, we have Rob and China. Rob and China. We have Re- Revenge Body with oh, Chloe Revenge Kardashian. Revenge Body. We have Dash Dolls. I am Kate. Dash Courtney Dolls. and Chloe take the Hamptons. And also, oh, Cor- oh, the- Courtney and Kim also took Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. Oh, oh that was funny. We crossed wow. that. We crossed yeah, that. that was good. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't even think of one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's five was hard. Okay, um, so the score is 2-1, you guys. Okay. And this back question is back to you. And this, I'm going to play a clip. Mm. And you have to tell me 
what movie it's from. Okay. You complete me. Is my, it Jerry Maguire? I, my gut instinct was that it sounded like Leonardo DiCaprio, but I'm oh. removing that because I do not think it does anymore. I think it's Tom Cruise and Jerry Maguire. No? If, if that's uh, what you feel confident in, I would have never guessed that, no, but, if but the fact that you complete me, what is that from? I know people say, people reference it all the yeah, time. Yeah. But I you also... complete me. But I'm, I'm also thinking of You Had Me and Hello, and that's Jerry Maguire. Oh, no. <laughs> you complete me. What movie is that from? 30 seconds. Or actually, 15 seconds. Oh, fuck. The Notebook? No. No. It's not The Notebook. Five seconds. I, it's, it's, I don't know. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, it's to you guys now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have a guess. Okay, I agree that it sounds like Tom Cruise. Um, I I think it is Jerry Maguire. Final answer. You? Okay, mm-hmm. I'm thinking also Far and oh, Away or Top Gun. Maguire, I'm really gonna I think, I think it's Jerry Maguire, I really do. Final answer. Yeah, Jerry Maguire. Correct, it's oh, Jerry Maguire. Oh, Fran! God damn it. That, <laughs> she, that says, was, she says that you was had me in hello right after. Right after, that. yeah, fuck. You Sad, know what? I wouldn't have even thought of Jay Maguire unless you guys had yeah. said it. No, I mm-hmm. knew it. That was some bad second guessing of myself. Should have trusted my gut. I knew it right away. He played it. I said Jerry Maguire. And then I said, nope, that's <laughs> I not I have it. no words for you. God damn it. I have no words. That's right, we're tough. We're all tied up at two. All right. Oh, we're man. doing better than last time, you which are. I like to see. I this didn't even, couldn't even throw out the guess. It's oh, a little that's interactive. A, that's I like it. You didn't I'm even sorry. throw out the guess. You should have thrown out the guess. I know. I should have just You got to take a shot at least. I hope I don't come back to regret that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this one is... Their um, question. Yeah. 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 Okay. John Mayer had a song on which Disney film soundtrack? This is multiple choice. A, Pirate of the Caribbean. B, Finding Nemo. C, Cars. D, Monsters, Inc. It's Cars. He sang Life is Like... He sang his version of Route 66. Final answer. <laughs> Allie's yeah. like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> wow, they're up 3-2. I'm proud of myself. I like these questions better already. Yeah, they're good. Me yeah. too. This is yeah, a good week. Who was Ryan Reynolds married to before Blake Lively? <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, I knew that was. Yeah. Final answer: Scarlett Johansson. Okay, tied up at three. <laughs> you don't even want to give us the correct. He just goes K. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Because I knew that. Okay, Mr. Hostman. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a host being like K. Dis- disrespectful. Well, I was just like, Crazy. fuck. That was too easy. Uh, no, but I needed that one after I yeah, just I, fucking I, I, whiffed Jerry Maguire, so. I can't get over that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one hurt. All right, yeah. we're all tied up at three. All right. Which band was originally called Kara's Flowers? This is multiple choice. A, Aerosmith. B, Green Day. C, Maroon 5. D, Fall Out Boy. This is our question? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait, oh, rep- say, originally, re- repeat, repeat uh, it. Okay. Which band was originally called Kara's Flowers? Kara's Flowers. Do you want me to read the choices? A, Aerosmith. B, Green Day. C, Maroon 5. D, Fall Out Boy. Start the clock. I can tell you think you know it, Camille. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's, is it Maroon 5? I've never heard that, but they've been around for a long time, so. I, I just have a gut feeling that it is. Final answer. Um, uh, is that okay with you, Ali? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, yeah, let's go for it. Maroon 5. <laughs> Just Correct. along for the ride. Oh, yes. wow. I knew it was Maroon 5, too. I was hoping that would come back I- to us. I had heard that before, and just the options, Maroon 5 was definitely the most yeah. popular yeah. of all those, right, and I was right. like, it's gotta be. Okay, this next one, I'm gonna give you a minute as well. Okay. Name five. Oh wait, sorry, sorry to the, Haley. That was her question. I forgot oh, to give her a shout. Oh man, out. unbelievable! Shout out. Shout Did out I give her Samantha a shout out for the John Mayer question too? No. Damn, oh fuck. no! Shit. Shout out Samantha. Yeah. Okay. This next one is shout out Brittany. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it sounds like their first. That's like their name. Shout, shout out, out Brittany. Brittany. <laughs> okay. Name five near death experiences Meredith Grey has encountered. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. The bomb, bomb, f- falling into the the, the, the river. harbor. Yes, yes. The was she in the plane crash? Oh, you're not even that far. Uh, all I know is she's got corona. So corona, corona. for sure. <laughs> I, that counts right now. Um, okay, so we got COVID, the bomb, 
um, the river, or the, the harbor, the whatever. The harbor. I didn't. She? I'm pretty sure she was in the plane crash. Okay, I'm. I, okay, we need one more. Um, would the would the would the shooting at the hospital count? Like that's yeah. got to count, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a near death experience. I would okay. Say. Final answer. We're going. She currently has COVID. The bomb. The drown almost drowning in the harbor. Um, the plane crash and the shooting at the hospital. Here's the thing. Oh no. Okay. I didn't count the shooting at the hospital as one. I didn't have that down. Okay. Because I, I don't know like- if she even, ever even encountered the gunman. Like. I don't know. I didn't have that down. Okay. I, I kind of feel like it counts, but at the same time, I didn't have that down. I feel like that counts. I kind of there's, anybody, there's two, uh, there's two anybody, other clear, like, better choices in that one. Which anybody, are, but I don't want to say Oh, it, oh, like, oh, oh, oh. Okay, but anybody who's involved in a, sh- a gun is in, in the place of, of where they are is almost, they could <laughs> yeah, but die. Was she... Like, I don't even know if she ever, like... She could have just never even seen the guy. And, like, was, was she there? Was she there? I mean, she was there. She was yeah, in the she hospital. she was probably there, but, like... I mean... I... She was there when Derek got shot. Yeah, that's a... That's true, I think. That's a... Okay, you know what? That's, Fine. That, I Fine. feel you like know that what? I'll counts. Give it to you. Okay, I'll give it to you. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least it counts as a half okay. a point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll give you the full point. That that counts. What were, oh, so what were the other two? Yeah. The other two were... an ambulance crash. Delivering her son... Okay. And then patient attacking her. Remember when the patient attacked oh, her? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she broke her jaw. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, we're all tied up at four. Oh, okay. Nice. 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 This, this is high this score. Is go. <laughs> How many more questions do we have? Bunch of smarty pants. Halfway through? We have seven left. Seven. All right. Okay. We're going to ask go. Okay. Next question. Thank you, Sammy, for this question. What was the name of Chuck Bass's hotel on Gossip Girl? Oh my oh, gosh. Man. Mm. Um, okay. Oh, it's been so long since I saw that show. No, I haven't watched it since high school. But it wasn't, it definitely wasn't named after Blair. But what was it? Mm. What, why do I feel like, I don't, why do I feel like it had a girl's name? I don't remember at all. 20 seconds. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know. Yeah, no <sighs> answer. <laughs> no answer? No, yeah. I feel silly. Okay, to you guys. This is an empire? Me. Yes. Because yes. that's what it's actually called. Yes. Right. Final answer. Final answer the empire. Correct. Yeah. Empire Hotel. Yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you think that one or <laughs> over again. Just, yes. just say, the, just say yep. the right answer. All right, we're going to frame her up 5 Kay. 4 now. All right. And this question is to you. Yep. Thank you, Stacy, for this question. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. How many people from the Bachelor franchise have won Dancing with the Stars? How? Just the number, not who. No, who too. Uh, what? Wow. You just, just that in there? Did you just add that in? Well, I thought that was pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Okay, well, Caitlin and Hannah. Well, you said how many people have won. That's, yeah, that's true, looking for a number answer if we're really getting into semantics. Um, okay, so uh, Caitlin. Hannah. Hannah. Um, none of the guys won, but I believe Mel- Melissa Rycroft won early on. But I'm trying to remember if it was Melissa or the other girl that was with Jason Mesnick. 20 seconds. Jason Mesnick had... Um, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think it's... I don't think any of the guys have. Sean Lowe was on it. He five he, seconds. Okay, okay, all right. Three people total: Caitlin Burso, Hannah Brown, and Melissa Rycroft. Correct. I thought that was going to throw you off because Melissa won the All Star season, not. Mm. Yeah, and that was also like a decade ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I watched a lot of Dancing with the Stars as a, as a kid. <laughs> Six four, Rhea and Fran. They could be pulling away. Um, this next question. I feel like an expert. I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> shout out to I Molly. Felt, I felt like we were down a scary path last week. Okay, shout yeah. out Molly. What color was Peyton's bedroom in One Tree Hill? 
All right, this is you, Allie. I did not watch One Tree Hill all the way through. I only watched half of the first season. <laughs> uh, well, I, I know, she, I know all, she did the podcast, though. First of all, you should go watch One Tree Hill. Yeah, definitely. One Isn't Tree Hill's it? great. <laughs> I did not really um, get into it. Okay, I don't know why, but I feel like it's either black, blue, or green. Well, let's think. Okay. Teenage girl bedrooms. I feel like blue and yeah. green. She was very, options. like, angsty, so I feel like... <laughs> black would be my best guess but she i just remember her having all the like drawings on her wall yeah okay Ten was seconds. it like i remember her having like the people everywhere but was it uh, what i black like or a, blue or like a black and red almost five i just black okay let's just go black it, it, it had all the people yeah. with black okay yeah. Final black. Answer? yeah Incorrect. Oh. pretty sure it's red yeah i was gonna say red Final answer. Final answer, red. Correct. <sighs> Let's go. I, I I thought Camille was gonna sneak that sneak that, that in. Right I in. I was <laughs> like, said no. black and red, and I was like, no. Yeah, I was like, no, no, <laughs> just black. Seven four. <laughs> all right. This is to you guys. Yeah. Korean friend. Name all of the Kardashian Jenner kids from oldest to youngest in order. Okay. Oldest. Like Kardashian questions. Okay. Oldest would be. Uh, Courtney, right? No, but, but we're the kids name. But but are we the going kids. Oh the oh, kids. Oh. kids. Oh. I, I think I, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah the kids. Wait, their children. Their so children. like we're talking Mason generation. Yes. Okay, oh, so okay. Mason. Mason North Penelope. North Penelope. Wait, let's go by family first and get everyone and then we'll place them by age. Okay. I think. No? Uh, that might take too long. I was just going to... Okay, 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 okay. All right, Mason. Mason. Uh, well, how many... I was thinking number-wise, so we know the total okay. that we need Chloe's to get Okay, Chloe's got to. one. Chloe's got one. Kylie's got one. Kylie's got one. Rob's got one. Yep. Courtney has three. Courtney has three. And Kim's got four. Four. Okay, so we're ten total. Ten total. Okay. So we got Mason. Mason. North. North. Penelope. Penelope. Who came first, Saint or... Saint or... Rain. 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 Rain? Rain. Okay, then I think seconds. it's Penelope, Rain, Saint. Saint. Um Dream. Dream. Stormy. Stormy. Uh true. true. And and then Oh, Chicago. Square no, Chicago. Chicago's in there. Ten more seconds. Chicago's. All right. Well, we gotta. We gotta. Well, at the buzzer, we'll we'll name them yeah, all. Yeah. Chicago's in between. Chicago's before Stormy. Before Stormy. Right, five, but after Dream. Four, three. I think. Two, one. All right. Okay. So let's Give name them the from the top. Order. Okay. Yep. We got number one Mason. Mm-hmm. Number two North. Mm-hmm. Number three Penelope. Mm-hmm. Number four. Rain. Rain. Number five. Five. Saint. Saint. Number six. Now this is where is it is it dream or Chicago? I think dream. Dream? Dream. Are, are we right so far? I'm not gonna tell you. Okay, dream Chicago. Stormy. Stormy. True. True. Psalm. Incorrect. Oh no! And you you had everyone right except one, and now it's two guys. Oh my okay, god! Okay, I think be, I think that they flipped dream. Penelope and North. I think Penelope is older than North. And Mason Penelope. So North. so can you give yeah. me the, can you give me the full order? Okay, m- m- this may take a second. <laughs> Mason, Penelope, North, Rain, I think right. Saint, Dream. Rain. Chicago, Stormy, True, Psalm. Correct. Oh, I, 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 oh man. I, Penelope is older than people North. Don't keep yeah. up with the yeah. Kardashians. Because, because, <laughs> yeah, seriously. They, because Courtney had two kids before anybody had kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 We fucked that one up. Damn it. Oh, okay. All right. The score is. They're set. around the same age, though. No, they are. They yeah. Are. They've got to be close. They're all. I mean, they're all super close. Yeah. Okay. Seven five Rian Fran right now. Yep. And this next question. Okay. I'm just gonna shout out everyone for this. Oh, also that was Emily. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, for that Emily. Question. 
Um, this next one, I had like a billion people send this one in, so I'm just going to say thanks to everyone for this one. <laughs> okay. But Thanks to all your collective um, brains. Okay. <laughs> what number is Troy, Bolton, Troy Bolton's jersey in High School Musical? Mm. Okay, let's think. <sighs> I feel sad okay. that I don't know this one. I know. I'm trying to envision. I'm trying to envision. Oh my gosh. It's a single digit, right? It's no, be. it's definitely two digits. I'm, oh, two. I'm in between 12 and 14. But I think my oh, mind okay. is saying 12 because that's my favorite number. So I, th- mm-hmm. I'm, I feel like my heart is my heart is telling me to go with 14. 14? Okay, yeah. I mean, I have no idea. You don't, so. have, you don't have it? You don't mind if we go no, with 14? I would have gone with like seven, so. Okay, I think, it, I think it's 14. Final answer? Yeah. Correct. Fuck, oh, I knew it! I knew it was 14. I, oh, I want to go 12 so bad. You're making a comeback. Shit. Seven, oh, six, man. When she okay. said 12 is her favorite number, I was like, just go with it. It's yeah. your favorite number. <laughs> no, I knew, the I knew that it would be two doing left. me wrong. Uh, two left? Yeah. Oh, shit. We got to get this right, Rhea. Okay. There's two questions left. Oh, shit. Seven, six. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Okay. What college campus did Zoe 101 film at? Pepperdine. Yeah. Correct. Damn. Oof. That was it. I think that was for the win. But yeah, but we'll, yeah. we'll still do yeah. the last, yeah, do the last that was question. For the win. <laughs> wow. Um, for the point point purposes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What female artist holds the record for the most number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100 of all time? Multiple choice. Madonna, Katy Perry, Rihanna, Mariah Carey. Hmm. Okay. I feel like just time-wise, it should be Madonna. I just feel like she's- I don't she's know had... why I just also like have this feeling that it could be Katy Perry. Okay, I was thinking that, but then like I, Madonna was like Katy Perry of her time. So I just feel like mm-hmm. time-wise, she has more time to collect more number ones. Mm. I don't know. I just, I was, I have a gut, we're not gonna win anyway, but I just, <laughs> have, a feeling, I just have a feeling it's Madonna. <laughs> All right, well, let's go with Madonna then. All right, let's do it, let's go with Madonna. Incorrect. Oh, maybe you're right. Um, Like Mariah Carey was popping out to me, or Rihanna. Rihanna was popping out to me. I mean, Rihanna was popping out to me, but Katy Perry also has some fucking hits. Yes, yeah, she does. She does. She does. Mm, let's just say and it would for be, the shit of it, though. It I would feel be like... very telling of Noah to give us a Katy Perry question as the last question. You're right. Just and and the answer think about. being Katy. Yeah. yeah. No, let's go with Rihanna. Let's go I think with well, Rihanna. that was gut reaction. Okay, is, it is it Katy Perry? It's Mariah Carey. Oh, oh okay. okay. Well, we would never. I, we all would have guessed I literally <laughs> would have never put Mariah Carey. Mariah yeah. Carey is Damn, second I, all time to anyone. I really, really? actually, I, I knew that. You knew that? Then why didn't you say it? I did. I said, I, why, I, I said, why do I think it's Mariah Carey? <laughs> True, you All right, did and say the final that. score is Rhea and Fran win 8-6. All wow. right. Wow, nice. All right. Good Thank game. you guys so much for playing. That was, that was so w- much fun. That was very, that yeah. was better yeah, than that. It was really for fun. having us. That was fun. Camille, Allie, thank you guys so much for coming and doing with this with us. Um, I feel like, I'm starting to feel like Bobby Flay. Yeah, you right? Know? Like, <laughs> all I wanted was, I it. wanted to, like, the whole point of doing beat Rhea and Fran is like you're basically beat Bobby Flay and we gotta be good <laughs> right like we are the chefs of pop culture yeah, exa- so, <laughs> so I chef. feel like that, yeah. that's where it comes in but yep. thank you guys so much for, for coming on and making time for us this was a lot of fun thank well, you thank guys you say, it was definitely the highlight of the week I bet yeah, <laughs> no, we were so excited thank awesome. you guys so nice meeting you guys have fun at, at, the, nice at school I guess the rest of your semester however it plays out <laughs> thank you yeah. thank you We have Margaret Josephs coming up. Great interview talking about Real Housewives of New Jersey and her new book. And I just got to say that I know this is the you know, this is the last segment. We're taking a little break. We talked about this at the beginning of the show. And we have been, we've been go, go, go. It's time to relax, time to chill. We're going to be doing that with some Coors Lights. Coors Lights, the official beer of Chicks in the Office. I think you guys know that 
if you are just constantly moving, you're working, you're with friends, you're whatever you're doing, you're busy, you want some time to relax, to chill out. Re and I personally like it the most after we're done recording, we've been talking for so long, we just want to shut up and have a beer and reach into the fridge, see that ice cold Coors Light looking back at us, the mountains so blue. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. Like I said, the mountains on the bottom, bottles and cans turn blue when your beer is cold. That's when you know it is ready to go. It's as crisp as the Colorado Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind. And we're going to be unwinding. We have some time, which means that we will be grabbing our Coors Light and perhaps some Coors Seltzer because now we have a great variety. If we want a beer, we can have a beer. You want a Coors Seltzer, um, you can have a Coors Seltzer. So if you ever feel like you're always on the go, you're just juggling a million things at once and all you want to do is chill, Coors Light is literally made for those moments. Because everyone likes variety, Coors has also introduced refreshing Coors Seltzer with flavors like black cherry, mango, and lemon lime. Get Coors Light and Coors Seltzer delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. And it's the last week, listen up, it's the last week to tweet us and at Coors Light pictures with your Coors Light or Coors Seltzer for a chance to win some Chicks in the Office merch. So don't forget to do that. And always remember, Celebrate Responsibly is coming from the Coors Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado and Fort Worth, Texas. All right, everyone, we have a very special guest, Real Housewives of New Jersey star Margaret Joseph joins us. She's got a new book coming out called In Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. We are so excited to have you, and I know that our Bravo-obsessed listeners are super pumped yeah. that you're coming on. So welcome to the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be on. We are so excited. You know, this one, we want to talk to you about your book, but also obviously talk about this season because this season of New Jersey has been just fantastic. Top-notch television from the second it started, um, but we'll get into that. I want to ask you about this book. It's coming out April 13th. We have it right next to us. The cover yep. is fantastic. There it is. Um, Thank you. We love the fact that you got a bagel because yes. it's very New Jersey. We're from New York, and you know we appreciate a good bagel. Yes. Yeah, very, you know, I love tuna fish on a bagel. Who doesn't? <sighs> yep. So do I, honestly. And it's one of those things that I love it so much. It's my go-to. And it's taken me so much to admit it because people judge people who like tuna fish because of the smell. But it's great. Tuna is fabulous. It really and is. New Jersey tuna, white meat tuna, little mayo, little celery on a bagel. What's better than that? Mm. That's really, I also, really love, the, really I also love the caviar too. You know, yes. I'm a high love girl. High love. Of course, of course. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so what what made you want to write this book? Well, I think everybody knows me from the show yeah. and what I've revealed on the show, but you only get a little slice of my life. And I didn't get on the show till I was 49. And there's so much more to know about me and what I've done in my life. And growing up with Marge Sr., and all of the business that I've had and the sexual harassment and great fun stories, crazy stories, me being a mom, my first marriage. There's just so many things to know about me that people don't know. And I think there's a lot of inspiring stories and, and you know, mentoring women. And, and there's just so many things that I feel that it's time for everybody to know about the march. Right. And people get to know you on The Real Housewives, right? But they're only seeing kind of what the show wants to show. They're only seeing a little part of your life as well as many other women. So they're not getting all of you. But when they become a fan of you, they want to know more. They're like, we want to know her entire backstory. So mm -hmm. give it to us. So I think this is great. Exactly. And it says how to survive in business and life. Do you feel like you give some tips and advice throughout this book I as well? Uh, every chapter has life lessons and what I learned at that part in my life. So I think there's amazing business advice. I think there's amazing life advice. Uh, you don't get this far, fall down, pick yourself up, fall down, reinvent yourself if you don't have life lessons. And I feel like, you know what, you can reinvent yourself at any time. Uh, I've lived my life without fear. I always say whatever happened to you in your childhood is you're not responsible for that, but you're responsible to fix it as an adult. That's a big thing that I have to say. So I think there's a lot of great life lessons and business lessons as well. Yeah, the uh, and I know you get into it in, in the book, but you know what some people do know and don't know from from the show is that you created this lifestyle brand, this massive Macbeth, uh, Macbeth collection. And I would just I'm curious how 
and I, I like I said, I know it's in the book, but I I would love to know how you kind of felt like how you ended up in that world and and that kind of fashion world um and kind of also when you knew like I have something really great here like this could work yeah I mean I had left the garment center I had my son a lot of people don't even know I have a son and I always wanted to work have creative outlet so after staying home for a little while I started at my kitchen table with a girlfriend just making creative storage for toys and things but with prints and patterns and we took it to a local store and it sold out in two days. Uh, I put my name on the New York International Gift Show and every, every store ordered from Neiman Marcus to small specialty boutiques. It was very of the moment. And I was like, oh my God, we have a business. But I had no idea it was going to take off. And it really, it was self-perpetuating. And I, I really had no idea it was going to blow up. And it really started to grow up, uh, blow up into other products, a lifestyle brand. I started licensing in 2009. And I just knew that I really made it. We were on the O list. Oprah's yeah. favorite things a yep. few times. I was like, oh my That's God. That's when you know. Yeah. That's <laughs> when you know. The, and, and everybody was very recognizable. We got tons of press. And that's when I knew, I, you know, we really made it. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you make a, like a brand like yours stand out? You know, I feel like everybody is so unique in their own businesses, right? Everybody takes on a business venture and they have their own ideas. And I feel like we see it a lot with the Real Housewives and people in reality shows and other shows. They're like always creating, coming up with, with new ideas. How do you make sure that yours stands out against like the rest of of the businesses well, out I, there? I also had a business before I came right. on. Well, I, I was going to say like... Yeah. It's and, you. You've been doing it for, for years 20, and years now. now. Right. Years, right. Yeah. Twenty-one years. I always had a distinct point of view. Um, I always say it was just. I was always like jet set preppy, very colorful. Everybody yeah. always like says that even the way I decorate and look. Um, I always say have a very distinct point of view. Don't be a me too. And that's what it is. I think a lot of people will come on Housewives. Some people have created obviously very successful businesses like a Bethany Frankel mm -hmm. or someone who Lisa Vanderpump with her restaurants. But it's just, you have to really believe in what you're doing. It's not just a get rich quick scheme. It's because businesses really don't make money for five years. It's nothing is an overnight success. That's all crap. So it's, you have to really believe in it. And I think that's what makes me stand out. It was very hard work. It took me a long time. I've, I've had lawsuits. I've lost a ton of money and I've made my comeback and I'm constantly reinventing myself, changing with the times. And, and it's my passion. I really love to do it. To me, it wasn't even about the money. I, it's the creative drive behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been a part of um, the Ho Real Housewives of New Jersey for a few, few seasons now. Season eight was your first season? Season eight. So season eight, I should yeah. Yeah, my fourth season is airing right now. So how do you, like, feel now looking at how you are season 11, how you are season 8? Like, do you think that you are a little more full-blown Marge now? Like, I, I just feel like when you enter a show like The Real Housewives of New Jersey, where these women are so iconic and everybody loves them and they have these massive personalities. Um, Cause you know, we've had, we've had Melissa Gorga on our show a couple of times and she's always said that she loves the cast now because it's really hard to get along with, with uh, these ladies. Like they've had women come and go where it was like, this isn't going to work. But the group that you guys have got going now has been really great. No, I was very lucky. I feel like I, cause I got on older, I was my full self. The only thing that's changed on me is I've gotten younger since I've had plastic surgery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've aged backwards. Yep. But I feel like I came on like myself. It's the dysfunctional family I was meant to be in. So I feel I've just, it's my same personality. I don't think I've just, changed since kindergarten. I've always been outspoken, uh, is 50% delusional, 50% determined. <laughs> and, and just, I think everybody's seen my personality be the same. I hold everybody accountable. I'm snarky. I move on, you know, yeah. I'm just, as, just as crazy as I have always been. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, who are you currently getting along with from the show and who are you not getting along with? I think it's exactly how you're seeing the episodes <laughs> who I normally get along with. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, uh, Melissa, Jack, I mean, I'm very close with Dolores. I think people don't realize that. It's not that I'm not getting along with anybody. It's like, who's annoying me at the moment? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. right. That's really what it is. I mean, Jennifer, I always feel like she's like a bratty little sister. <laughs> she's annoyed me through the, you know, the season. Teresa, it, you know, we, it's not that she annoyed 
it's, I always hold her accountable. I hold everybody accountable, mm-hmm. including my own husband. I fought with him on this season. Mm-hmm. Whoever annoys me, I yell at them and then I move on. But other people are more grudge holders than I am. Right. Right. Yeah. We want to talk about a few of the things that have happened in this past season. Now, you may have your own like with with Jen, you have your own issues with her right now. We're seeing on the show. But then we also see Jackie and Teresa have their problems. And you're kind of like a bystander in that. How do you control being a bystander in a scenario like that? Because I feel like it's easy to get wrapped up into things. It's easy to take somebody's side. How do you stay sort of neutral? I was, you know, I, I had a point of view. Mm. I did think Teresa should apologize to Jackie, whether she heard the rumor or not. Um, I felt like if you hurt somebody, it's very easy just to apologize to the injured party. So I gave my opinion to Teresa and I wanted Jackie to move on. So I always give my opinion, Yeah, mm-hmm. no matter who it is, be it my good friend, be it whatever it is. And then I felt like it was dragged on much too long. It is, it is hard. Um, I think some of the girls give their views based on loyalty or who they're good friends with. I give my views of how I feel about the situation. Right and wrong. You just yeah. base right it off wrong. like what's... I don't care. I don't care who it is. It doesn't mean I have to be vicious about it, but some people just don't want to hear it. Right, right. And when you guys sat down um, for dinner at Dolores's house down the shore um, and you guys were having this conversation and, and Teresa and Jackie are still going at it and that's when Jen brought up that Joe your Joe had also mm-hmm. said at guys night that he had heard rumors uh, about Evan now in the moment you weren't you were not at guys night you did not know what they were talking about but of course you know they played this clip over and over of, of Joe saying it so how have you how now obviously watching it back what's been what's been going on because you know at, at dinner Joe said hey I didn't say that but they you know kept going back to that clip of him alluding to the situation (laughs) yeah of course well Teresa brought it up and then Jen got in the middle going he did he did he did yeah it was repeated incorrectly what he said at guys night and I think Joe just didn't want to hurt Jackie any further he said he heard it in my house he has nine or ten women in his house talking nonstop. I do have a staff which is true and and he did hear in our house because I came home from that party and I repeated it to my staff what had occurred that night. Yeah. We also filmed the blow up of, you know, the girls at my house, Teresa and Jackie. I filmed telling my mother <laughs> at the house. So it was the buzz in my home. Mm-hmm. They said he said he heard it in town. He's not. He, the guy doesn't go anywhere. He's not, here <laughs> He's not at the gym. It's obvious the guy doesn't have a gym body. It's like Super <laughs> Mario. So the story was repeated incorrectly. So when I said to Joe, did you or did you not hear yeah. it in town? I was so frustrated because I know he didn't hear it in town. So of course he's going to be like, I didn't hear it in town. Because he doesn't want Jackie hurt more or anything like that. So I'm not apologizing to Jen. I think she said it to try and like validate Teresa right. because she's so up her ass. Right, right. Speaking of you up, know, right. not helping her. Yeah. So. Um, speaking of up the ass, uh, how, how did you think, what did you think of Teresa giving all the ladies the the vibrators and the, the comment to Jackie of, you know, why don't you just basically I, shove it? I thought, I thought the vibrators were beautiful vibrators. Yeah. <laughs> they said the uh, Dolce Gabbana vibrators, the packaging beautiful. was stunning. They were beautiful. A plus. <laughs> A plus of the vibrators. I thought what she said to Jackie was not necessary. It was mean. She came out hot. You know, yeah. she was very upset. And I thought that wasn't necessary. That was like nasty just to start out with. And I thought Jackie, you know, didn't come back at her. And that could have dropped it there. But it was just like we're pushing her and pushing her the whole night. And I felt sorry for her. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those things where in like Teresa's point of view, you, you you feel like, okay, they have this little back and forth going. They're not getting along. But in her head, she's probably like, I'm going to say this as a joke. But everybody else around knows that she means it in a snarky way because they had been fighting. Yes, exactly. And it, it was not nice. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, we're not going to get through another meal. I'm going to miss, you know, another delicious food. And that's going to be it. Yeah. My night's going to be ruined. Right. How was being in the Jersey Shore, you know, because this season was filmed differently, obviously, with the pandemic going on in quarantine. How was filming like for you? You know what? Uh, Everybody took amazing precautions. We were tested numerous times a week. We were very lucky. Filming in the pandemic was not as rough for the Jersey girls because we film a lot outside. We have homes. Our crew was very safe. We were one of the franchises that were very blessed that none of us got COVID. 
So it wasn't as bad as it was for everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Well, that's good. because We're very lucky. Yeah, yeah. it is it's nice great watching. great to see. It's, yeah, and watching it's nice because, of course, a bunch of reality t- shows have come back. Um, and it's hard to kind of give the same fun, light, enjoyable content for the viewer when there is uh, clearly heavy things also um, going on. So it's like a, you got everyone did a really good job of being like, this still feels like the Jersey Housewives in a normal year where it's not yes. like this is the oh, this is the Jersey Housewives in a pandemic year. It's like, no, you guys are still having fun. You're still doing your thing. Um, everybody's still screaming at the table and getting get, getting intense. Um, what did you think of what did you think of Jen kind of throwing your story about you and your boss kind of back in your face? Like when, you know, uh, Jen was very drunk at the party and it came become a conversation and she sort of threw that back at you when you had shared that with the other women in confidence and like a, a intimate moment. Yeah. I think it was a very vulnerable moment. Yeah. I think it was a different time. Um, I think that's a very horrible thing to do to somebody. Also it's victim shaming, yeah. victim shaming, slut shaming. And it was, and she compares it to a moment of her 40 year old self that was a self-induced drunken moment. So that really upset me, irked me. It's not women empowerment. And that's why women don't come forward about sexual harassment and sexual victimization right. in the workplace. So I think it was a very poor choice of her doing something like that. And it was very disappointing, but am I shocked? No. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's hard because right. yeah. that is exactly um, what I think most women's fear is, right? Is to share that story and then to have other people be like, oh, so you, you know, you tried to sleep your way to the top. Like that's yeah, and right. Yeah. That, and then she, and then she proceeded as I saw to say that I slept my way to the top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, terrible because I feel like the way that you explained it to, to the woman is like a power dynamic thing. You're put into that situation and it's your boss and you, it, it, it's a shame that she, to your face almost or probably when you were talking about it you know acted like you know she understood what you were saying and what you were going through but it almost feels like yeah and then be- the behind your back and is saying something else and then throws it right in your face yeah. when there's a when there's a heat of the moment little argument yeah that's you know i don't take anybody's vulnerable moment and use it against them or weaponize it against them but that's just the type of person i am listen did i throw a nasty dig at her afterwards absolutely um, yeah, but you know, it was a very, it came from a different place. And I just feel it's, it's not very nice, empowering. And that's why women don't come forward yeah. for, yeah. for people like that. Yeah. Did she, where are you guys at now? Did she apologize for that? Or are you guys still in this? Um, you, know what, you guys will have to watch the rest yeah. of the episode. Yeah. If anybody's seen Twitter for some reason, she's doubling down. So. Oh, good. Oh, goodness. <laughs> See, this is the thing. Twitter gets everybody in trouble. Yeah. Twitter gets everybody in trouble. You know, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm so sorry. No, no, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. No, I try and live tweet the episodes, but for some reason, uh, my social nuances or, or my humor gets lost on metaphors and analogies yeah. don't land well on Jersey. Yeah, the analogies have never landed well, but uh, and it's hard on on Twitter as well. You're a you know, limited amount of cat, uh, um, characters, and you can't you can't say as much. I feel like, but it definitely does stir everything. Oh, up I'm looking stuff. at the, I'm looking at the tweets right now. Yeah, <laughs> Jen tweeted, and this was on March 31st. And you're slutty, and everyone knows it. Don't start none, won't be none. Wow. Oh my and goodness. then you wrote, this is what a victim shaming looks like and women stay silent. We can all say nasty things about the episode, but this is an all-time low, especially with this current climate. At Bravo TV, I'm ashamed. Yeah, that's Which, a tough, that's honestly, wild. Yeah, that is a wild tweet, I feel like, from her. <laughs> that is, that is a wild tweet. Yeah. Listen, I commented, I will say, I commented when she said I slept my way to the top. I said I might be at the top, but you only slept your way to Paramus. Um, I think I think if a shot comes at you and this is how I live my life which may be wrong but if someone takes a dirty shot at you it's kind of like also uh, there is you know they always say eye for an eye is is not you know makes the whole world blind yeah but There's Two humor point. in that response. Yeah. Like I, 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 um, I grew up in New Jersey, so I, I yeah. know like the, you I know the, yes, saying. I know what you're talking about. And I understood it's like you, it was a shot at you and you kind of came back with a shot, but, but with a laugh, like that is, you know, when you say like, oh, she slept her way to the top, there's not really anything funny about that. <laughs> there's right. no, there's, there's no joke fun. there. 
There's no joke. And yeah. she said that on the episode, I slept my way to the top. So I said, at least I'm on the top. You slept your way to Paramount. Yeah. Mean, like I would have made my fucking way to Park Avenue. Excuse yeah. my life. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. We, we talk like this on the it's show okay. all the so time. I said, it's okay. I would have made my way, you know, I would have slept my way to Park Avenue. But it's like meaning you haven't come as far in life. It's not like it's the most pres- prestigious address in New Jersey. Yeah. I wasn't saying she was like nothing remotely like that. But I mean, the, sometimes it, the metaphor is missed. Yes, yeah. and you and and you didn't take a personal story of hers that she shared with the group, and it was a hard time in her life, and throw it back at her, which is exactly. what your situation yeah. was. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's my point. And I and I would never do that to anybody. People, yeah, it's not. I would do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, from watching the episodes too, you know, I think we got and we've seen a lot of these moments in seasons past of you know. Joe Gorga, Teresa moments, uh, family, di- their family dynamic. How, as someone who is there and is sitting at the table and is watching this all go down, what is what is going through your mind in these times when you know Joe Gorga is punching the table and 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 screaming about their family? Like I, 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 it must be incredibly uncomfortable to be there in those moments. I, I was, I think Teresa was in shock herself. Yeah. I mean, she was, didn't say one word. Yeah. And Joe's emotions were so heightened. I think no one was like, we don't want to go back here. Yeah. This isn't like where we ever want to go back. And I was like, we were all freaked out. I think everybody, he was having so upset. And I think Melissa to see her husband so upset. That's when the cheese plate flipped yep. and everybody was having an attack. Cause we, he was just really hurt. I think he was just very, very hurt. Yeah. But that, like, as before, years ago, it wouldn't blow over so quickly. That blew over very quickly. So right. we're grateful for that. Right. It does seem like they have gotten a lot better at, like, let's kiss and make up. Like, it's it's yes. these, it's these a, moments. Yeah. And, kiss, yeah. Yeah. and you see, like, it was laughing watching Melissa, like, take these cubes of cheese and putting them, like, back on the platter, trying to, to, to clean up <laughs> yeah. this, trying to clean up the situation. Um, you know, the husbands on this show are, they have these moments that are so incredible. Like, I, I really would love a husband's the men of the show right because I would like for Frank Catania to be included <laughs> as well um to have their like own show I really think that they all deserve it yeah I think you're <laughs> absolutely right they would have a great spinoff the guys are fun they don't carry on they make jokes yeah. they're not sense of they're not going to have a big blowout the, the Jersey husbands are the best across franchises we have the best husbands yeah I, I think so too here's what I think though I think a spinoff is a bad idea oh. because then we'll see too much of them and then <laughs> and then it all of a sudden becomes like they're not like these great right husbands I, anymore I, I guess and not, you know I'm sure they are but like getting them in doses makes it even better yeah in my opinion and then they might get cocky and then yeah we'll have to right right and then you right. gotta you know right. you guys are on top can't right have now. too many stars yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true yeah, that's exactly. yeah yeah, yeah exactly. we get the real husbands of bravo <laughs> yeah. yeah what um what are your thoughts on Frank and you know the David relationship and how Dolores kind of handles all that because watching it is very funny and that has been some of my favorite parts of this season are the clips of like Frank when he was living in their house and David's taking care of him like it's just it's a it's very interesting dynamic I think they have a great relationship Frank and David have a great relationship yeah yeah. I think Dolores has managed to uh have it very adult and civil it's impressive i think it's a testament to who dolores is that they both respect her so much yeah truthfully yeah definitely and that they both care about i mean frank and david are totally two different people oh Mm -hmm. for sure for at least from what we at least from what we watch you know too um especially on the on the show so going back to the moment where joe Gorga obviously blew up and that's all Mm -hmm. on camera. How often do things pop off off camera? Like how often are you hanging out with these people and then there's a big blowout fight and it's not being filmed? It happens. (laughs) I know it's shocking, but it does happen. Everything is not for camera. It's it's not so shocking because I, I come from an Italian family from Long Island. So like I'm used to things, people just blowing up at random moments and then everyone just carries on about their day. But seeing it, on camera you're like oh okay this is they're yeah. they're, they're playing it, up but it, it happens and i and i've seen it happen and it's not shocking i've seen it happen and then we move on yeah. and it, yeah so it, it happens and i and i've witnessed it yeah well that's i'm not <laughs> so that's surprised that's, at all 
Well, I hope everyone is super excited um, for your book. I know we are. And I, wa- I want to say, because I'm also, the back photos yeah. are fantastic. How is Marge Sr. doing and what, is she, and does she live with you? No, Marge oh, okay. Sr. lives down the street. Down the she street, okay. In an apartment building down the street, a beautiful doorman building, next door to Lexi, who works, you know, with me, who's yep. on the show with me. They live next door to each other. But she's doing great. Marge Sr., is a superstar. She's fabulous. <laughs> That's awesome. Love to hear it. I know. These these photos of you guys are just so great on the back. Oh, this is yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing, amazing green dress, by the way. Oh, that's, thanks that's so a much. stunning dress. Thanks. It's, Love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, we also want um I know you the book is coming out on um, April 13th, but you also have, you're also a fellow podcaster. You podcast as well. You know, your, your podcast is the the same name as, as your book. What got you into the podcast game? You know, I thought there was so many great podcasts about, you know, Bravo and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, I would love to do a podcast about entrepreneurs, disruptors in their industry, anybody who has a dream and made it successful and people who really inspire other people, because I feel that's very interesting. I always say I'm not from the lucky sperm club and I'd love to interview people who made their dreams come true. So I said, that would be a great way to have caviar dreams, tuna fish budget. So we have everybody on there from Brian Kelly to Nadine Macaluso, who was married to the Wolf of Wall Street. We have, you know, every, from every place in the world, you know, and Bravo celebrities who've started businesses. So it's, it's been really fun. Very interesting. I think very inspiring, especially during COVID. I mean, people, the way they pivoted and and to come out the other side. So I really enjoy doing it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's super informational, educational, and just fun. And you know what? It's real life advice. It's not like, Oh, write a business plan. I did this, call this banker. We give like real advice Mm -hmm. to like what people want, the nitty gritty and what it really is like to start a business and and be successful and the pain and the suffering and the great times and the good times. That's awesome because I I bet the people listening, they get inspired by it. They feel confident in their ideas and they can learn from people like you and other people have built their Mm -hmm. businesses from the bottom to the top. Yep. Yes. That's that's why we did it. Because you know what? There's a... I'm not CNBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's a, it's a fresh spin. It's a fun way to learn um, and relate to you. And Margaret, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. Like I said, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. Uh, her book is available April 13th. And Real Housewives of New Jersey is airing Wednesdays, 9 o'clock. This new episode, um, new episode, will, when this airs, it'll be tonight. So this episode's coming out. Uh, new episode coming out. What can you uh, tell us about how the rest of this, not, not the rest of the season, because we only kind of just started, but A little how, things are, how things sure. are going to go. It's, you know what? I think everybody's really going to like it. More drama to come. <laughs> that's drama. a good thing for the TV yes. show. <laughs> More drama to come. Thanks so much for having me on. I loved it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great meeting you. Great meeting you Bye. guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. We're going to miss you guys so much while we're on our break, but we will be back better than ever. We hope you guys enjoy the week. Enjoy your weekend. We're going to miss you guys. We love you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for allowing us to take this break and understanding that we may need a little bit of a break. Thank you for being understanding and we'll be back better than ever. Love you guys. Miss you. I I don't want to say goodbye. You know, you're really dragging out this goodbye. I I don't want to say goodbye. Bye. It's not a goodbye. It's a ceiling. (laughs) We'll end it on that.